So here's the first data that we looked at, was asking the very question. Are cities, in fact, scale versions of one another when we actually look at data? So here's some very mundane data. This happens to be, well, we were doing it in Europe. These are my, some European collaborators I had. Uh, gas stations as a function of size. So this is the same plot that I showed you in biology, except for gas stations, and size is, we use the population. And here it is, it's that same going up by factors of 10. And what you see, it's pretty good scaling. You tell me the size of a city in Spain, I will tell you how many gas stations it has from this. And what you see is it scales in all these countries and it scales in a similar way in each country. In fact, the slope of these, the gradient of these lines are all pretty much the same. And they're less than linear. This, uh, I should have drawn it on the graph, other graph. This is the linear, which would mean double the size of a city, double the number of gas stations. No, there's an economy of scale. Not surprisingly, the bigger the city, you actually need less gas stations per capita in a systematic way across Europe. But you know something? It's the same graph in the United States, in China, in Japan, and so on. Not only that, it's the same for any infrastructure you look at, which I'm not going to show you the graphs. That is, you look at the total length of roads, you look at the length of electrical lines, you look at the water lines, anything you want to think of to do with infrastructure, you plot it, and it looks just like this anywhere in the world with the same slope, same gradient. So there's this extraordinary universality in infrastructure, but much more important. And, and in fact, this is very much like biology, very much like biology, but this is much more important when we looked at phenomena that have no analog in biology. These are phenomena, characteristics that did not exist in the planet, possibly even in the universe, unlikely, but certainly did not exist on this planet until we started talking to one another and forming communities eight to 10,000 years ago and then ultimately forming cities. Things like wages and something that one of my friends, Richard Florida, calls super creative people, you lot, for example. And if you plot them in that same way, the same way as we did the biology, you know, there's quite a bit more scatter, but you see a definite scaling trend. And uh, what you also see is that the slope of these lines is bigger than one now, not less than one. And we call this superlinear rather than sublinear. And what this means is, in English, that look at the top graph, systematically, the bigger the city, the higher the wages per capita and the more fancy-schmancy, super, um, super creative people there are per capita. But you also notice that the slope of these lines is very similar, about 1.15. There's kind of this 15% value added the bigger the city. And we will explore that. This turns out to be true for any socioeconomic quantity, socioeconomic meaning something that has no simple analog in biology, like wages and super creative. But it's true not just in the United States, it's exactly the same everywhere in the world. And it's the same for all the phenomena that happens to be patents produced in the United States, that happens to be crime in Japan. This is police, tax receipts, construction, debt, and here we put together one plot, and what we did is we took, I forget what it is, GDP of the city, the number of patents produced, the uh, number, the crime, and the income, and you can see they all pretty much follow the same line, and they all have this rough the slope roughly of 1.15, this kind of 15% value added, and this is true, we could have, this is actually United States data, but it's the same, in China, Japan, just to repeat myself, Chile, Colombia, across Europe, all the cities, that, all the countries where we've been able to get data. So there's this kind of extraordinary universality which is remarkable because cities in Japan evolved completely independently of cities in Europe or the United States. 
So somehow agglomerating people and forming communities, no matter what kind of political process went on or what kind of planning was inducted, no matter what kind of community action was done, on the average, on the average, there were these constraints at work that made a city kind of conform to the scaling. So that, if you tell me the size of a city in a given urban system, meaning, say, in the United States, I can tell you at the kind of 85% level how many police it will have, how many patents, how many AIDS cases, how many hospitals, what the length of roads are, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> 